you may have come across, I certainly hear people talk about it, it's called the paradox of choice. <coughs> and the famous BE experiment, uh, which is in all the literature, is one about jam. And uh, in these two different scenarios, they had uh, jam on sale in the supermarket with a sampling table. And in the first instance, they had 24 different choices of jam, uh, for which they gave people a taste and a money off coupon to purchase on the day. And with 24 choices, that attracted 60% of the shoppers, who sampled on average two jams each, and 3% of them made a purchase. When we restricted the choice to just six jams, the uh, same number of uh, jams were sampled, although uh, a, a lower number of shoppers were attracted to the store, so only 40%. But 30% of them, 10 times the amount, actually went on to make a purchase. So by restricting the choice, we actually got a much higher response rate and a much higher purchase rate. So we often think about choice and I hear the conversations myself at Oxfam that you know we should give people lots of choice and then they can find their way in and we can inspire lots of people to do different things um, by giving them lots of different choices. In actual fact by restricting the choices we will get a better response rate which is kind of counterintuitive. And we've actually done this so um, this is, I'm sorry this is a little bit difficult to see but um, I shall explain it. Um, this is a, uh, a test and control that we did in 2009 with uh, our climate change campaign. <coughs> and on the left hand side you can see the control, uh, which was a, a hub, a, a digital hub that we were driving traffic to, which had two choices, one of which was to take a campaign action, one of which was to sign up for a regular gift at a pound a week. And then we tested that against a six choice option and a 12 choice option. The six choice option had things like um, hold a fundraising event, uh, attend the wave, which was our, the march that we uh, did in London. Uh, and then, I can't quite remember how we got to 12 different choices, but we managed it. Uh, and um, we saw um, the results were pretty clear. So uh, the blue line is the response uh, or click-through rate that we got with just two choices. Uh, the orange line is six and the yellow line is 12. And you can see clearly there's a 36 to 46% improvement in the control by restricting people to just those two choices. So it's something that we've seen um, in our own experience as well. So that's the paradox of choice. The next uh, old hat, something that we all know as fundraisers, um, but now we can show a graph on, is called the collapse of compassion. Uh, this is a term coined by um, a researcher called Paul Slovak. Um, and essentially it's the uh, demonstration that uh, stories trump statistics. So uh, the response to a named individual is much more powerful than uh, a, a statistical um, uh, narrative. So um, this is the, the value of a life saved plotted by the number of lives. And the term collapse of compassion clearly indicates from the more lives that you've got that you're talking to the donor about, the less they actually care. Uh, and we know this, don't we? Because that's what we do. We tell stories. Uh, and this again is an example of collapse of compassion uh, that we've tested from Oxfam. So this is very recent. Uh, we did this in May, June of this year. This is the South Sudan appeal. Um, and uh, this was an A-B test of two digital uh, panels on our website. On the left-hand side you have um, the very powerful emotive eyes to camera and the copy, families like Martha's have been left with nothing, they desperately need your help. On the right hand side, a more action oriented image, no identified individual with the copy, Oxfam has already reached 170,000 people, help us get vital aid to thousands more. And you can see from the statistics, the click throughs and the completed donations were significantly lower in the case of the statistics than we were in the case of that name. <coughs> So again, that collapse of compassion and the power of stories, it's all hat to us fundraisers, but isn't it good to kind of have that proven and have a language to talk about that? The final old hat uh, is the one of reciprocity. Now, I don't have an Oxfam example for this, but this is a charity example. Uh, a well-known charity that works with children based in Switzerland, uh, who did a mailing to their warm donors uh, uh, mailing to, to 10,000 of their warm donors where they tested three different packs. 
The principle of reciprocity is we can't help ourselves as human beings but want to give something back if we've already received something. And the three packs that they tested were a uh, control pack, which was a simple letter explaining why they needed more donations for street kids in Bangladesh, um, a letter with a small gift, uh, which was a postcard. Um, so the image is there, it's a postcard that the kids had drawn, um, and it was explained that this was a gift from the kids um, to the donor. So there's a small gift, and there was a large gift, which was a pack of postcards, which again was explained that it was a gift from the kids. The difference between the control and the small gift was a 17% improvement in value uh, from warm donors, and the difference between the control and the large gift was a 75% increase in value from that segment. And this is because people are responding... So you're responding using small to large or control to large? Control to large. Um, in the deck, by the way, which you'll receive at the end, or links to all of these um, studies, so um, all the data will be in there. So a really strong result there. It's why when people send out mail packs, they put pens in them. If you've ever sat in a call group and asked um, people to say, would you respond more to the pack with a pen or not, they all go, no, of course I wouldn't respond more to the pack mm -hmm. with a pen, and they probably have a moan at you for wasting money on pens. But when you send them out, every single time the pen pack wins. And it's, it's because people unconsciously have this reciprocity. They can't help but respond more when they've received a gift. And it's something we need to remember. Something we know, but again, good to have the science behind it.